this is Jenny from Art by Jenny K. Um, I thought I would show you some stuff I've been working on this week. Um, at the beginning of the week I watched a video from Pam at the Paper Outpost where she did some really loose flowers on some backgrounds making a center spread. So she created a background with book pages uh, and then she kind of did some flowers, painted some flowers on top that were very loose. Uh, and I will link her video below so that you can you can see my inspiration. Um, I kind of started that and then I decided that I wanted a lot more color so I colored in the background and then I decided that there wasn't enough contrast between that and the flowers so I outlined them in black. So I kind of took off from from what she started with, uh, but certainly hers was a was an inspiration. So I did this one and I liked it, but I decided I really didn't care too much for the flowers. So, I mean, they're okay, but, but they're not really, I think, what I was after. Um, so I decided to try again. So this is what I came up with. So I did, a, I, well I did, I found a couple of more backgrounds that I had already put together in my stash. I usually have um, pieces of background paper that I have glued scraps to, to just kind of give me something to work with so that I don't have to start collages from scratch every time. Uh, so when I get scraps of things, I do that. So I, I pulled out that and I went over it with some, some watercolor and I decided I really liked that and I really liked the, the spatter on it. And then I decided I needed to do a little drawing maybe um, because I still like the idea of having flowers or something on it but I, I want something a little more bold and graphic. So I did this one in using black alcohol markers and then I did this one using a warm gray alcohol marker and you can see the contrast is much more subtle so it would be um, much easier to blend it into a background. Uh, so this was a lot of fun and I enjoyed doing it so I thought I would uh, show you what I did and maybe I'd try a couple more and uh, maybe Maybe we'll go with some different colors or maybe we'll try a different color uh, on, the, on the alcohol ink drawing, but we'll just see how it goes. You can see I drew, I even drew the exact same thing on these two. I don't know if you can really see maybe both of them together. Um, but I did, I did the, same little, the same little doodle kind of drawings on each one. Just one is in, um, you know, the the warm gray while one is in the black, which provides a lot more contrast. So, okay. So I thought we would start with that. So I brought along some um, pieces of paper. As I said, I, I like to just, I just glue scraps down. Sometimes I go through my um, scrap box of book pages uh, and, and see what I can, what I can find. This particular um, one came from uh, an illustrated graphic novel, an illustrated novel for the Three Musketeers. Uh, so I, I have a lot of book pages. I liked the font. I liked how big it was. Um, so I, I got that one. I, I think I picked it up at uh, Goodwill or someplace like that, uh, you know, for maybe a dollar. Um, so I have this one and I have this one and you can see I left the Three Musketeers kind of on them. And then I have a couple that have drawings from the book. As I said, it's, it was like an illustrated classics. Um, so I thought we might try those. That's, that's a little bit different. Um, when I make my kind of just basic, uh, basic master board kind of things without anything really on them, uh, ready to decorate with other things, I do them on magazine pages. And you can see this one I folded over a little bit. Um, I do them on magazine pages because the pages I, I like the Real Simple magazine because the page is a little bit oversized, uh, so I always have plenty to plenty to work with later. And it has a nice feel to the paper. Glue sticks to it really well. It doesn't wrinkle too much. And this provides a lot of stability, so I don't need anything that's that's super heavy on the back. And I don't want to use up any of my good paper collaging something over that I might cut off or I might do something with or, or stick down. Um, if I were going to use this for a tag, I would probably back it with something else so that you wouldn't be seeing that or I would collage something on the back. Um, so 
this to me just gives me a lot of versatility. I slap pieces of the book down that are scraps in my scrap box and I use up a magazine page and all is well in the recycling world. <laughs> okay, so let's try some of these. I brought along um, this, turn it this way. I brought along this pan of watercolors. This is an inexpensive pan of watercolors, but I like it because it has uh, some nice colors in it. I like the pinks and the oranges. I like that there's more than one orange and several yellows and greens. So I like the variety of colors on this. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of slap them on willy-nilly. So I'm just gonna set this off to the side. I have, of course, a cup of water and I have a nice round um, watercolor brush. Um, this is not a fancy brush. They're not fancy paints. Um, they are just uh, student grade. They, you know, you don't have to have anything expensive to do this. This is very much just kind of, we're just gonna slop it down because remember the idea is to just get some color and kind of let it run together. Um, the fun part on this one was different, different papers kind of took it a little bit differently. Um, so this one all being the same paper should take it fairly much the same, but it will call attention to the edges. You'll see the edges more as color accumulates along the edges and it will still, you know, bleed around on it. So I'm just going to, you know, start with, start with some colors and throw them down kind of willy nilly. There's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's to me, it's just about getting some color on the page because I do like, um, I do like color, but I like it to be kind of watercolor and interesting in the background. Um, you know, so you can see this isn't, this isn't any too dark and, and it's kind of, you know, you can, you can kind of emphasize the edges if you want to. You could um, go through and use Distress Ink and do a lot of the same thing. Um, you could kind of swipe it across there and put some water on it. If you have watercolor pencils, uh, certainly do that. You know, you can dip the pencil tip in water or, or you can wet down a brush and stroke it along the edge of the tip uh, as opposed to like color, like if you don't want to color with it. Um, I have arthritis, so it, you have to push kind of hard sometimes on watercolor pencils, depending on what they are, to get a lot of the pigment down. So I tend to dip my brush in the water and then stroke it along the pencil. Um, which gets me uh, plenty of pigment without having to uh, push it onto the paper. So that's another way to do it. So there's lots of ways to do it. Do whatever works for you. This is, this is certainly about uh, having fun and using what you have. I am not in favor of going out necessarily and buying a bunch of, a bunch of stuff. Um, I like junk journaling because I like using up things that other people have thrown away. That's to me, that's part of the fun of it. And so if I have to go buy a bunch of stuff, then not so much. Um, you know, sometimes I do have to buy things like you might if you don't have the paints or you want some watercolor pencils. <clears throat> but, you know, that's OK. You might even go to Goodwill and find some, you know, cast off watercolor paints or pencils there and so you're still recycling something you're still not necessarily buying it new we <coughs> excuse me we have uh, a place called the artist resource center in phoenix i live outside of phoenix in a small town in queen creek arizona called queen creek arizona and so there is there is a Place called the Artist Resource Center. Uh, they have been closed unfortunately because of the pandemic, but they have a lot of, of uh, supplies that are used supplies that are still good. Someone just decided they didn't want them anymore or they changed their art, they donated it, and it's a great pl place for art teachers to go and get materials um, teachers can have them for free, art teachers can. So sometimes when I'm doing projects uh, at school, I, I make a trip into Phoenix and see if they have some, some things for me. Um, but even just personal artists can, can buy things for donation. So 
they you know they have suggested prices on things but you can just donate some money and and come out with a whole bunch of stuff I had a friend who uh, is not an art teacher but really likes to do likes to do art projects and she went oh well, before the pandemic so I guess it's been almost a year now because we're coming up on a year that we've kind of been kind of been in the situation we're in um, and she made a $20 donation and she said what can I have for $20 and they said what do you want and she picked out this kind of box of stuff so for her $20 donation she got quite a bit of stuff so you might check, I guess the, my point is, you might check in your town to see if they have something like that. Uh, artist resource centers are all over the country, I believe. I think it's a, it's a charity thing um, that, that is nationwide. So there might be one in a town near you. Uh, if there isn't, then there might be something similar to it. So you should, you know, you should check it out. And it was my experience there that they were happy uh, to be passing along materials. They didn't, they didn't worry too much about, you know, who you were, what you're going to do with them. Um, but certainly they were, they were happy to, to help, especially if you're going to do a class or something like that. Uh, they, were, they were certainly happy to pass along materials. Go back here a little bit of pink here. It's a light. Okay, that one looks pretty good. So we'll set it aside to dry. Do another one. Maybe we'll do more blues. That was lots of orangey pinky. So maybe we can do something that's a little more blue. And I don't worry too much. You know when I'm doing this, if if the colors get a little muddy, that's that's okay. It's it's just a background page. It's not. It's not going to be, you know, high art or anything. So it's all right if they're a little muddy. And aside from that, if you like things that are sort of antique-y uh, and, you know, vintage looking, that muddiness often comes with age. So it just adds to the patina. Um, so I think it's certainly okay. Just kind of slapping some different colors of blue down here. We'll add some purple and green maybe in a minute. And like I said, I'm not being too too precious about it for sure. This is just, you know, slopping it on there. So <laughs> not even really looking at where it's going. Just kind of going. I really love the purple in this palette though. And I like how it kind of just blends into the blue. I, I, I think the book pages take the purple really well. And I like that kind of, it's kind of a stormy look, I guess. You know, reminds me of storm clouds gathering or something. <clears throat> Which maybe is not a happy thing, I don't know. Um, living in the desert as I do, rain is pretty much a happy event in our house so I tend to be a little sloppy with this too uh, <laughs> when I was <clears throat> when I was a baby there's there's a picture of me I think in a high chair um, and I, I'm just kind of a mess I, I have stuff all over me and my grandfather uh, coined the name happy mess from that from that photo and generally just my personality because well people who know me know that I'm always kind of a mess but that's okay that <laughs> um, just means I, I throw myself into creating things and I don't worry too much about uh, whether I have paint on my hands or under my fingernails uh, which I frequently do <laughs> paint and glue and all kinds of stuff um, you know so it's okay if you're if you're one of those messy people you know, this is a good project for you because it's kind of just slopping stuff down it's not it's not too precious if you're not one of those messy people um, then that's okay too right whatever whatever you want to do so this one has a very different feel to it see with the blues and the purples let's bring this one back so you can see this is very sunny 
flowery looking pinks and greens and yellow and orange very sunny happy and then this one is much more uh, with the purples and the blues so that's kind of cool so let's see how how it's going to look if we if we do something on some um, of the graphic graphic novel pages the drawings um, I haven't I don't usually <clears throat> I don't usually use pictures like this I haven't had anything so that was one of the reasons I bought the book when I when I saw it um, was because it, it was a graphic novel classic and you know I thought it was it was kind of cool so let's use some kind of purples and reds on this maybe we'll see how that goes we could even use some tan sort of see what we can get here right here's kind of a a beigey like a warm gray not not really color there's not a lot of color to that it's okay we'll try some brown well that kind of looks almost coffee dyed doesn't it that brown does I could maybe use that to actually coffee dye some paper later as opposed to, although I have to admit, I like coffee dyeing it with real coffee because it smells so good. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a coffee lover, so I enjoy that, that nice cup of coffee smell to it. Um, my husband drinks tea and I drink coffee, and so we have both, <clears throat> but I really much prefer that, that coffee smell. I enjoy a good cup of tea, but oh, that Java smell. That's always good. So we're going to go back in a minute and, and spatter some of these. We're just going to let some of that other dry a little in between. All right. Go back in with some of that brown. We'll use some of those brighter colors on the on the other one, just so we have different things to play with. And you can see the edges are kind of absorbing the color differently. So let's see. I've got a darker brown here too. I wonder what that's going to look like. Okay, looks a lot darker in the pan than it does on the page, but that's all right too. Very, very vintagey looking, I think. Isn't it funny how we like all these things that are old? It's, you know, we we don't want things really to be old, but we want them to look old. <laughs> I always think that's kind of fun. Maybe a little more red over here. And just he looks like he needs red. He's kind of unhappy looking, isn't he? So ultimately, I'll probably cover him up because he looks a little angry and. I, I tend to like happier things, even if they're moody happy. I don't, I don't necessarily want them to be unhappy. But you know, when you're just gluing down scraps, and, and when I glue down the scraps, I don't, I don't pay a whole lot of attention. This is kind of cool with the purple over the kind of beigey, huh? I'm liking some of the brown around the edges, but. Okay, we'll let that one dry for a second and we'll try one more. Maybe we'll do this one in some happier colors. Go back to those pinks and oranges and yellows and greens. You know, if you do a bunch of these, um, if you just sit and do a bunch at once, then you've got some stuff to work with as a base. Then when it's time to decorate something, you, you've got... You've got kind of a collage base to start with. Um, you can collage lots of different different things too. I mean, I have I have uh, lots of pages that have colors and and pieces of colored paper and stuff on them. I just thought the uh, black and white 
the black and white kind of plain ones would be better since we're going to draw on it and it might show up a little better although I think once we once we draw on it I might still collage some stuff over it might go in and find some things or I might cut it into tags certainly the best part of having things like this done in advance is then you can just use them and add stuff on top of them and the base is ready to go so that you can make it fit whatever theme so if you have a particular theme in a junk journal or you're looking to make a particular layout maybe you're taking one of the challenges one of the many many challenges from Facebook, Instagram, YouTube I think even <clears throat> that original, the original one I did uh, was even, I think, part of part of uh, Pam at the Paper Out. Part of she has a Facebook group that uh, you can join and, and do some playing around in and people post the things they've made. And I think that was in response to her, one of her challenges, I think it was last Monday's, Monday's challenge. I think we need a little yellowy here. A little more yellow. There we go. So I think it's it's funny how things can, the same kind of, of pictures, can end up looking very bright and sunny and and kind of girly, as opposed to the other ones, which maybe look a little darker that we did in the purples. Hope you all are having a good day. I hope you're finding time to do something creative. I know a lot of times I put on uh, videos when I don't really have time to do something creative, but I kind of want get a, want to get inspiration for later. I'm thinking, oh, right now I, I don't have time this instant to do that, but I could let it play in the background while I'm doing something else. And then I'll just wipe off some of that. I've made a mess. <laughs> happy mess. I'm a happy mess. That's that's pretty much true. Um, so, you know, I, I put them on the background and let them play so that later when, when I'm ready to create something, maybe I think back on the things I saw and think about what I could do or what I have. So now I think I'm just going to kind of go in and put some spatters in because... Well, being a happy mess, I kind of need spatters. Um, when my when my daughter was young, we lived in a very small town in Arizona, and uh, it hardly ever rained, of course. So one monsoon season, we were at the grocery store, and uh, we came out from the store, and it was pouring. But during monsoon season, if you wait five minutes, it'll quit. So we waited a few minutes and enjoyed watching the rain and then we pushed our groceries out to the car and as we put our groceries in the car we discovered that there were some really massive massive puddles in the parking lot. So of course we had to stop in the puddles both of us. We, we held hands and jumped around in those puddles and had a grand old time and I think quite a few people in the, in the parking lot and, and the grocery store thought we were mad. Um, but that's okay. We had fun. My daughter and I had a good time together. And that's probably, you know, one of those things. It's, it's a silly thing that you do. But you remember it for a very long time. And I think she remembers it too. She remembers jumping around in those puddles. You know, I mean, we were okay. We left our shoes on, so we weren't gonna, we weren't gonna step on anything that we didn't need to step on and we were going to go home and and uh, clean up anyway so we just went home and took our groceries inside and you know, took a nice took a nice shower and got cleaned up and had a good time so I've never been one to shy away from being messy 
Oh, so I, I rather like that with this with the spatters on it. I think it kind of just marries everything together. So we'll move that one, and you can see it made quite a mess here. <laughs> oh, alas! I think half of the fun of of making things is that it's permission to make a mess. You have permission to make a mess. Not that I really need permission to do pretty much anything. I'm going to do it anyway. But. It seems like that is that is true when you're when you're creating things and making art and you know playing with paint you you definitely seem to have license to make a mess which I think maybe is a good thing you can and you can do the same thing you know when you're cooking a lot of stuff and you're baking and you can make a make a mess in the kitchen. So I always think that the creative process is messy and it gives you freedom to make a mess. You don't have to worry about it. And you can always clean it up later, right? Creativity is messy. Because creativity is trial and error. When you, you know when you when you try something new, when you create something it's trial and error. It, it may not turn out. You may not like it. And you may have to do it, you know, a whole bunch of times before it's right. But that's okay because it's about the process. You know, it's, it's about doing something different. It's about taking a risk. This one's quite moody, isn't it? Let's see. Oh my goodness, one of my kitties is in the background wanting to be petted, I think. So you probably hear her. Of course, she could be playing with one of the other ones too. Sounds like they might have a toy. Oh, see, that bright pink is gonna liven this up a little bit with those spatters. <laughs> there she is now. <laughs> Let's put some orange and yellow and stuff on there too and kinda make this maybe not so dark. You know, and we can you can make quite a few of these fairly quickly. You could make some and walk away and let them dry, which is what I will do. I will. Well, maybe one more color, maybe some yellow. I will uh, do this and then turn off the camera and let them dry while I'm doing something else, and then I will come back when they're dry and we'll do some drawing. Okay, one more. Oh, nope, I spatted that one. Yep, there's this one. There's this one. When I was a kid, I, I grew up watching Bob Ross on Saturday morning and his, his worlds that he created with happy little trees and, you know, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. And I really wish, <laughs> I really wish that... Uh, I could remember that in other parts of my life. I am I am good at remembering that when I'm painting or making something, you know, that I, I tell myself it's okay, it's just paper, it doesn't matter. You know, if it doesn't turn out, okay, it's just paper, it's not a big deal. A little bit of paint, a little bit of paper. You know, but sometimes it's hard to remember that and be brave in other parts of our lives, isn't it? Which is why I think maybe we need to spend time making things to remind ourselves that life is about taking a risk, taking a chance, doing something different, trying it out. That just livens those up. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up and let these dry and then I will be back in a, in a minute or two, um, you know, through the magic of a second or two really, I guess, through the magic of video and we will draw on these. All right, I am back. The paper is dry. So on the ones that I did um, here, 
I guess it's a little easier probably to see this one because it's more contrast. I, I just drew some little grasses and, and seed pods and things like that. Um, and when I want to draw something like that, I usually use uh, this book. And I really love this book because it's, as you can see, it's 20 ways to draw a tree and 44 other nifty things from nature by Eloise Renoff, or Renoff, maybe. Um, so I just want to show you. This is a great book if you like to, you know, if you want to be able to draw some things, but you're not really sure how to do it. The line art in here is really cool, and she shows you, you know, 20 different ways to draw something. Um, and so there's, you know, we have butterflies. The thistles are pretty. Dandelions, right? All kinds of cool things. Peacock feathers and moths. And so seed heads. So this is the one that I drew on the other the other paper that I just showed you. That's one of the things. Um, there's room to draw in the book. I usually draw on separate paper um, because then I can cut it out and do something else with it. Uh, and I so I really like doing that. This is a great way to if you just want to practice drawing some things. I skipped a page, huh? This one's fun. Um, I tagged this one, so I think maybe we'll draw a blossom here in a minute. If you just want to practice drawing some things, this is really cool. She has created um, interesting drawings without being so complicated that you feel like you can't do it. Um, so it's, it's a neat way to practice. There are easier and harder ones. Um, I really love the clouds because I like how she used different you know, shapes and stuff to get different textures, little hash marks and different textures within the cloud with still basically having the same shape. And she does that with a lot of things. So this is just a really great resource, um, you know, if you want to draw a feather. If you don't, uh, you know, if you don't have something to look at, you can always look something up on online. Uh, but I really think it's easier to go from from line drawings when you're looking at doing like a line drawing. It's it's easier to you know look at something that's similar to what you're going to do. So I just thought this was an, a nifty book. I have a couple of them. Uh, I have another one that's like 20 ways to draw a cat and I don't know how many other animals or you know things like that. So it's just a really great book. Um, so I have gone through and tagged a few. Uh, I thought I might start with a stemmed flower. Um, let's see, so maybe that one might go in the middle. Let's see what else I marked. I marked an herb. Those tend to be, and then blossoms. Okay, so maybe I want to do a stemmed flower to one side, the herb in the middle, and a blossom on the other side. So we'll just pick one of those papers, and we'll pick a, a blossom here. A stemmed flower. Something interesting, maybe something I wouldn't normally draw. Um, this one's kind of cool. I wouldn't, I don't normally draw that. This one's pretty though. I really like this. This might be pretty, just as kind of a very simple graphic kind of line drawing. So we'll we'll try maybe that one. Okay, so there's our dried paper. You can see once it's dry, the spatters show up a lot better. Um, so we just have to decide if we want to, you know, which way we want to go. I think I like this way. Um, it's, the text goes all different ways, so it doesn't really matter. I've also brought along some different colors of, um, of, those, of my alcohol markers. I'll do it this way so you can see the colors. Um, since on the other one I tried the warm gray, which was a real pale kind of warm gray, and it faded, I thought that looked kind of neat. I thought I might try a different color. Um, and I thought this one we might, we might try this kind of coral. Um, these are Bianyo twin, twin type alcohol ink, um, alcohol based ink. So there's a skinny on one end and a fat on the other. And I got these off of Amazon. Um, and I'm thinking this call this color is called vermilion, and it also has it also has a number. It's it's red 102. Um, so I'm thinking I got these in a whole pack. I've had them for a couple of years now. Um, I got a whole whole package of them, like 80 colors or something. So they weren't super expensive, um, and I think they're they're a good um, 
they're they're a good marker I you know are they the Copic markers probably not I've, I've never had one of those they seem a little pricey to me uh, that's just me uh, I don't I don't think I have the the budget to buy those um, so these are lower budget and they seem to work pretty well um, okay so let's try it we'll uh, we'll try it with a color we know that the black is going to be really nice and, and graphic and dark but I wonder I wonder what kind of effect like will we get a, a really cool effect because this won't be so graphic maybe it won't be so dark um, let's see. Looks like this one. In here. So you know, and these are. This is just a basic line drawing. So. It's okay if it's not perfect and it has one down here with a circle. I figure I'll try it in the oranges and the colors and things and if I don't like it I can always go over it in black. I mean the black will, will hide whatever color is underneath or you know, I can do a little bit heavier line and no one will ever see it and that's okay. So, worst case scenario, I don't like it, we'll go over it. And I'm not sure I'm liking it. It's it's a little orange. Maybe I should have picked something a little lighter. Oops. Got a little edge coming up there. Should have known I didn't check it after it dried to see if the watercolor pulled up some edges because sometimes it does. I think maybe the one in here doesn't have dots in the middle but you know it's my flower so I can do it any way I want right? That's the beauty of little line drawings and I think this middle needs a little something So just something kind of cute. I wonder about adding a leaf. Just just a little something extra. Okay, so we've got that one. And remember this is just you know, this is just kind of doodling line drawing. This is this is not high art. So let's try an herb. Let's see which one of these might be a good foil for that. So I'm going to kind of move here and then here and then maybe further up here so they kind of have some movement across the page. Um, so I'm going to start a little further up here. Since we colored that one in a little bit, we can do this one too. And this is just some little little loops up the page. I always think it's funny. I think doodles look so much more serious when you do them in black. So you do the same drawing in a in a bright color. And it looks um, a little, a little more fun, a little happier. But you do it in black, and it looks a little more serious. It could be just because of the the graphic nature of it. So I think we need another stem here, even though we're just going to do a few things. So we'll do one in black and on another page just to see how it looks. What do we think? The eye likes 
Yeah, I likes odds. So maybe one behind. And it's okay, it's just a doodle, so it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of this kind of thing, is you don't have to have a lot of a lot of perfection here. It's okay. Maybe if it's not. So that has a little movement to it. So we've got this one kind of straight, this one, so maybe we need one over here. It's gonna be more floral. So maybe one of those, one of those blossoms. Let's see, we could try one of the branches, maybe. I think we should probably do the flowers first. All right, so let's try some little flowers. Remember, this is a background page anyway, so it's not the whole drawing is not going to show. No one is going to look at your artwork and go, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah. Sometimes when I'm out places and I have a simple line drawing, something I have I have on occasion had people say to me, "I could do that." And so one time, one of my students who went to um, went to a university and got a degree in art um, she was talking to me one time about about that and I said you know it really kind of shakes my confidence when people say I could do that and she said well you know the answer to that is but you didn't so <laughs> and I always kind of thought that was a good answer but you didn't and you know the idea that somebody can do something that's fine. We want people to do things. We want everybody to exercise their creativity. It's not, you know, it's it's not a knock against you when somebody says I could do that. It's a, you know, it's a compliment that they think they might want to do that. They think something is cool enough that they wish they had done that. Or maybe they want to go home and try that. Right. Maybe just some little blossoms. All right, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about it in the orange. It's okay. I may I may look at it for a while and and decide I like it or don't like it. Um, let's try let's try doing something similar in black. I have not done one on something you know like this where there's pictures. Usually there's text, which is much less distracting maybe to something behind it. So let's try again and do the same thing in black just so we can kind of compare. Oh, and see here, because there's so much picture in the background, the black is gonna kind of get lost it seems, which is interesting to know. So we might have to, might have to break out that, that uh, big tip. Okay. Might have to break that out. Sorry if my hand is covering part of this. I should probably start from the left and draw towards the right since I'm right-handed. I don't plan that far in advance I guess. <laughs> no. So the spatter on this one looks very confetti-like, doesn't kind of liking it. 
seems it seems to have an element of fun maybe that would be lacking well that's interesting because we have so much black under it that that the black isn't really showing nearly as much as as I thought it would so that's good to know that this is going to be very much a background kind of thing just a pattern knowing that we could um, actually maybe add some more things to it you know if we want to want to set it off some more we could pull that heavier tip you know maybe come out and define the flower a little more Yeah, I like that one a little better because of the background at least, at least you kind of see, you kind of see it. And so this one, we had three kind of grasses and herbs, whatever, some kind of herb. It didn't say and I didn't ask and I don't know enough about herbs to know. <laughs> So, I'm sure someone out there is going, I know what kind of herb that is. Looks a little like rosemary, but I think the, the leaves would have to be a little more dense. Of course, we're not going for realistic, are we? We're going for just kind of a minimal line drawing. Right, where did I stop that line? right about here it looks like there we go I do think it's interesting to draw the same thing in different colors or on different patterns in the background because you see how much it influences what you see in the end how different something looks so I'm thinking with all of this this picture in the background um, I did two of these pages. I'm thinking the other one I might I might just stencil something, right? Then it might be more of a, a stencil kind of thing. So again, yeah, let's use that fatter end. Maybe kind of define it a little bit. Just because I might go in later and you know doodle something in the background and I want that set off so that's kind of you know all right and then we have our last we had a we had a little blossom over here that we did probably hear one of my cats digging in my studio stash over there no telling what he's into because He's a cute little menace, but he is a menace at times. And he loves my husband, no matter what. My husband always laughs and says, I'm the Pied Piper of cats. But there's always one that is, you know, favorites him. And he's the one. So I can be petting the cat and loving on him and he can be oh so happy and all my husband has to do is snap his fingers and that cat is gone. He is over there with him. So I guess I can I can spare one. <laughs> Outline that one too. I want to come back and do something else with those. Might uh, put in a pattern or something on the outside. All right, something out around it just to set it off a little bit, just to cover up some of this. Might still come back and do that. So I'm not really loving this one. Um, this one's fun, but I think I would have liked a different color. So we have one more. Let's try this one. 
And we could try it in like a blue or a purple. The purple's pretty dark, um, so let me show you. It's always good to test a little swatch. So the purple's pretty dark. Let's see how the blue looks against that. Less contrast. So the dark blue, light blue, what do you think? Or we could go with the gray. I'm not sure the gray is going to hardly show up at all though. There's a darker warm gray. Let's go with the with the dark warm gray and try that one. Do we want to do the same the same pattern or do we want to do something else? So let's let's go with the same pattern just for the sake of continuity here. You know, because we're gonna cover it up with other stuff that we're gonna collage on top of it. We may cut it apart, it's gonna be part of a page, so it's okay if we have the same the same pattern on it because it's not going to look the same when we're done. This is a base page, remember, so we're going to do other stuff to it. Um, if we wanted to cut it apart and make a tag out of it, uh, we could certainly do that. If we put it in a journal, going to be a base for something else that, that either we're going to decorate or we're going to leave for someone else to decorate, whoever ends up with the journal. I, uh, my last video, I think, I was doing a flip through of a little kitty themed journal that's for one of my friends. It was for her birthday. And so she, she has the journal now. Um, of course, I did, I did the flip through before I gave it to her, but then I didn't publish it until after I'd given her the journal. Um, and she was so excited. I was so happy that she liked it. Um, she already knew that she was what she was going to put in it, and, and I'd left plenty of pages for her to decorate, and I decorated some for her. So that's kind of nice with the brown, so it's, it's not as stark as the black. Right. I always call it brown. It's warm gray. It's, it's a browny gray. Right. It's kind of a brown with gray overtones. So I think that's kind of nice. It's not, not too stark. I know we're drawing the same thing, but it seems like it's a good way to compare. Because then it's not about whether or not we like the picture. It's about whether or not we like the color or the contrast or how we did it. Right? It's about the materials and the colors we chose. Oops. That's the only thing about drawing on something that's got rough edges is you might pull up an edge, but that's okay. I can glue that back down. And by the time it has something collaged over it, I might not even have to. Another way that you can draw something if you don't want to, um, you know, draw a particular something is you could draw circles or squares and then decorate something within the square. If you do like Zentangle kind of things, you could always do a Zentangle um, in a background. Seems like that might be a shame to cover up, but if you did something small or, or you were going to use it on a tag, you know, that would be really, that would be really good. Maybe we're going to use Zentangled something and then used it on a tag. That would be pretty because then everybody could see your Zentangle artwork. So, I like to doodle. I have doodled my way through pretty much every, every class and every meeting I've ever sat in. <laughs> When I was in school, my teachers would be like, Jennifer, are you, are you with us? You know, they'd call on me because they thought I wasn't paying attention, but I always made it a point to know where we were. Yeah, I was one of those kids. <laughs> 
the truth is I just wanted to draw and so if I if I knew where we were then I knew I wasn't going to get in trouble for it so I would fill the edges of my paper with doodles sometimes my teachers wouldn't take them because they were too messy because I had doodled all along the edge and then when I was in college I did the same kind of thing I doodled throughout the edges of my papers and my notebooks and sometimes even the textbook when I was marking up the book yeah I was one of those and in most of the meetings I ever sat in in my life too right, sometimes even even my principal thinks I'm not paying attention okay so those were quick little doodles just finishing up so we can kind of recap what we've done. So we have this warm gray, which is nice. It's not too much of a contrast. It's not too dark, but it is enough that you can definitely see it. Then we have this orange, which again, there's plenty of contrast. I'm still not sure if I like the orange. It's, it seems like it's okay, but maybe it's maybe it's a little much maybe I would have liked it better if it were really dark and you know and black and a kind of a graphic kind of a graphic feel to it um, and then we have this one which uh, I had never doodled on top of a page that was nothing but uh, black line pictures so that one is you know it just kind of fades into the background so I'm thinking I may have to go back and do something in the background here to cover up some of that um, but once I collage over it or, or do a page with it over it, it, it shouldn't really matter. But I'm not super crazy about that one. So of the three, I think this one is my favorite. Um, what about you? Which one do you guys like? Uh, you know, just leave me a comment. Let me know because <laughs> I'm just not really sure um, about some of these. I, I do like the technique. I'm just not sure. I think maybe I might stick to the the kind of browns and, and blacks just for the background because it seems more like something that I would I would use. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so if you like what I'm doing here, please hit the subscribe button. Um, when you subscribe, it really means a lot to me. Uh, if, you hit, if you hit the like button, that's, that's really great too. Thank you to those of you who have already subscribed. Um, I can tell you every time I get a message that says somebody subscribed, my, my heart skips a beat and it goes pitter pat. <laughs> So uh, I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you en enjoyed your time with me. I hope you go out and, and you know, give something a try. Um, I remember, you know, you only get one shot at it. So be brave. Okay. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.